Welcome to the Bourbon Experience. My name is Austin. Today I'm reviewing Booker's Reserves, Little Book the Infinite, and Regular Booker's. Welcome back. Before I get into this comparison of Booker's, if you could please like, comment, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, with that, let me get into this. So I'll be the first one to tell you guys, I am not a huge Booker's fan. If you saw the Booker's Blind I did with my buddy Brian, he set up four various batches within the last few years of Booker's. And for me, the 202401, the Springfield batch came in first place. If you like Booker's content, uh, I am gonna be doing a, have a whole lot of Booker's content coming up here pretty soon, which will be a fun thing, a fun thing to do, but I don't know exactly when, when that'll happen, but keep an eye out for that. It'll be cool, especially if you're a Booker's fan. Me, I tend uh, not so much. The bean profile just doesn't tend to be my favorite. Let's compare these, these new releases. So, Little Book the Infinite came out, and I was actually pretty excited about it. To me, it almost comes across as a wannabe wild turkey generations, where the three generations of uh, nose, everything, things they distilled all made it into this blend. So it kind of seems like a, a rip off of Wild Turkey Generations, but that's okay. It's a cool concept. To me, it seemed like there was more red fruit notes, it seemed more aged. It seemed like something that actually might be up my alley. And I was kind of seeing that maybe, you know, if you're not a Booker's fan, you'll like these. So I thought I will try and uh, acquire a bottle and I, I want to try it. And then of course, Booker's dropped the reserves, which, came out about the same time as Little Book the Infinite. And this is not a little book, this is a Booker's, but it seems to be fit the Booker's profile, but just tend to be a little bit um, more aged than the regular releases. So given that the 202401 was my favorite, and then these two both kind of caught my eye, I thought I would do a quick comparison of the three and see where I land. So let me start with the 202401. Oh yeah. So what I really like about this particular batch, yeah, this batch and Ronnie's batch, is there's a red fruit characteristic in this and that really jumps out, it really offsets the peanut. It's not overly peanut butter, peanut shell, you know. So the peanut's on here, but like it kind of starts peanut butter and kind of finishes peanut butter chocolate and then mid palate, you get that red fruit, like a strawberry type note. And for me, that's really what stood out about this one. In that blind was, it was not overly one note being peanut. Yeah. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Peanut, red fruit, like strawberry, caramel, peanut, then the oak and then some chocolate. This is actually, it's really good, it's enjoyable. This is like perfect on a cool night or something like that. I can see myself enjoying it. And I believe this gets better the longer it's open because I've had this one a fair amount of times. All right, let me move on to Little Book the Infinite. I'm doing it this order instead of the reserves and then the infinite. I'm doing it this order because I actually tried these two at the very end of a bottle share. It's like the last pours of the night. And I thought I had a certain preference. Again, it was the end of the night, but we're just gonna see if that kind of stands up or, or see what my thoughts are on these two. But I think I like the reserves a little bit more, so I'm just, I went with that one last. Okay, way darker perfume. Fruit, what else? I mean, this does not nose like a bean product. There's a slight nuttiness, but I mean, this could almost be like maybe a Heaven Hill. Wow, that nose is really good. Definitely better than the uh, 202401 Springfield. Oh yeah. So milk chocolate all across. Uh, oak on the finish. There is some red fruit. There is some floralness. There's a little bit of that peanut with the, kind of with the oak, 
mid palette into the finish. That's actually really nice. So like I said, this one was basically a, oh, let's see, we got Freddy No, Fred No, and Booker No. All stuff that um, fell under their oversight. And the proof on this one is 59.65, so 119.3 proof. And I didn't mention on the 2024, uh, one, this is 124.5 proof. So the regular Bookers is slightly higher than the Bookers Infinite or Little Book the Infinite. And then that's way better than I remember. So I'll be curious to see how the reserve stands up to it. So this is the 2024 Bookers Reserves. 62.95%, 125.9%. This is eight years, two months, 12 days. So Booker's Reserve, here we go. Oh man. It's darker than the, oh yeah. It's darker than the Springfield batch and it is definitely less peanut. It's not as dark as the Infinite and it is not as floral as the Infinite. This is almost just some oak, some Reese's peanut butter, and some caramel. Like that's that's what this is. So it's more, I would say one, one note or one dimensional on the nose than the Little Book Infinite, but what's there is really nice. And I would actually say this one, uh, Booker's Reserves, is slightly less peanut than the Infinite. We, <laughs> we should do a drinking game every time I say peanut, talking about these, uh, take a shot. Okay, everything translates. I mean, that is, that is peanut butter, it's chocolate, it's like a Reese's peanut butter cup. It's oak, it's caramel, um, it's pretty dense, that's nice. None of these are off-putting by any means. Uh, I think the regular Booker's release is clearly last for me though. Oh, Little Book the Infinite is just so much darker and it does have that red fruit thing too and the florality. I'm getting more cinnamon and baking spice on the finish with the reserves. I really think it's a, a mood dependent thing on which one I would like more Little Book the Infinite or Booker's Reserve. I think it could go either way depending on what I'm feeling at that particular time. I think the Booker's 2024-01 Springfield batch is one of my favorite Booker's batches, but it is clearly <clears throat> inferior to, to these two. Yeah. Infinite takes it. That's a surprise. I really thought I was gonna prefer the reserves. There's just more going on, it's more complex. Uh, there's just all these different layers to it. That's really nice. Um, I really like Little Book the Infinite. <clears throat> I really thought I was gonna prefer the reserves, which is funny, but um, I'm running out of things to say here, so I'm gonna blend these up real quick. Try not to drink too much. This is, <laughs> these are the first pours of the day and I have two more videos to shoot. So um, hopefully I can keep it together to do all those. Ooh, the combo is nice. <laughs> the combo, there's this like thickness, this Rick House thickness, this peanut shell thickness. There's the chocolate, there is the red fruit. Man, that, those all came together really nicely on the nose. The blend's not bad either. That is just milk, chocolate. That is just a Reese's peanut butter cup. And there's a, a hint of the red fruit. That's really nice. Anyways, if you're not a Jim Beam fan like myself, and you're looking to branch out, I would recommend any one of these. First being Little Book Infinite, second being Booker's Reserves, third being Springfield Batch. And that's where I'm gonna end this. As always, the bourbon experience is all about good boards and great times to play ever with. What's meant to be enjoyed, so crack those bottles. Cheers.